Hello and you're very welcome back to our Monday book review series. Today we'll be going back to uh, Immanuel Kant Towards a Perpetual Peace. And in this book, Immanuel Kant sets aside his uh, f- philosophy. It's a very short book, contemporaneous to other Immanuel Kant books in that it's only about 40 pages, where his other books might well have been up to 500 pages at a time. But he does start to make a lot of sense in it. So we'll just go through, just on page two here, he sets out five principles, five main principles for perpetual peace. Number one, no, tre- no treaty of peace that tacitly reserves issues for a future war shall be held valid. So you might say, the um, Good Friday Agreement, you know, there's 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 nothing in that that says um, that that war become acceptable in the future in Northern Ireland. Uh, number two, no independent nation, be it large or small, may be acquired by another nation by inheritance, exchange, purchase, or gift. So in other words, if there was a perception that there was strings attached, another nation's constitutionality could become compromised. Uh, number three, standing armies, milus perpetuus, shall be gradually abolished. Now, that's the most controversial um, part of it, and we'll get into that later. Number four, no national debt shall be contracted in connection with the foreign affairs of the nation. And number five, no nation shall force me to fear with the constitution and government of another. So you you, talk, you think about... Uh, the Anschluss with Adolf Hitler when he would have taken over the government of Austria um, uh, to expand the Reich east, eastwards. Now, um, so no, standing armies shall be stand up. So why that is controversial is because in the book of Proverbs it says wisdom is strength. So in other words, there's a perception that being able to defend yourself is a wise, is old wisdom. It's like saying would you put a plantation of, of wheat uh, and and not uh, put um, a fencing around? Would you leave livestock in a field and not fence it? Would you um, put put money into, into making a golf course or a sports plane and and not um, and, not, and, not, and not put a wall around it or put trees and fencing? So wisdom and strength is 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 a fun, fundamental principle of Christianity, but then a man can't say that the army should be stood down. So when you go into what he says, he says that it must be done gradually, and at the same time, you know. In other words, what he's trying to basically say is that the firearm and its corollaries, you know, U-boats, the navy, I don't know, tank warfare. Heavy guns, machine guns, you know, AK forty sevens are are um, an aberration of humanity, you know. And I suppose that's kind of where Kant becomes quite laughable, because I suppose it is probably a bit laughable to suggest that standing armies should be stood down. But later in the book, his main thesis comes up, you see, and what that is is um, uh, becomes a proof for American foreign policy. It says that it's known as the Democratic Peace Thesis. The Democratic Peace Thesis states that no functioning democracy will ever invade another functioning democracy. So something like, um, it's also known as the McDonald's Thesis. No country with a McDonald's restaurant in its capital city um, Will, will ever um, invade a country with a McDonald's in its capacity. Now you might say Tehran doesn't have one, or, or Moscow, or um, what do you call it, um, Kabul, you know, or, or Pyongyang. So this is just um, a thing about that, you know, and then you see that that, that, that autocrats, because you see what happened was then there was a professor said uh, one day, the spread of Christianity is good for U.S. foreign policy. But, um, 
because there was a perception that um, Muslim or Islamic nations were autocratic. Now I'll just give you a few proofs that prove that McCant is talking a lot of nonsense because to all intents and purposes Erdogan is an autocrat in Turkey. Yet he's in NATO, he has deliberately imposed a policy in Syria for the last 15 years of eliminating Al-Qaeda and ISIL from Syria. Um, and he is Islamic and he is an autocrat, but he is not at war with the United States. He's for US foreign policy. So Immanuel Kant does become disproved after the few centuries that he has left us, you know, in that respect. Um, another thing about Immanuel Kant was there's a perception that he's a very naive man as well. Um, he said um, that uh, human beings were an end in themselves, not a means to an end. So that wouldn't stand up in Vegas now where you have hoteling and prostitution and gambling and, and entertainment and things like that. That person who goes to Vegas thinks that human beings are a means to an end, you know. But we can't, can't believe that, that that's a morally corrupt philosophy and that, that um, like however well-intentioned Kant is in saying that human beings are an end in themselves, how many people actually believe that even when they um, do their regular business around town? They go to boil sports, they go to the car and get a hot chicken roll off her and spare. You know, they go um, to Aer Lingus. You know, they just see people just keep using people by how many bucks they have in their wallet. That's the way capitalism works, you know. So, um, it probably is an aberration, otherwise known as an error of judgment, to say that human beings are a means to earn in themselves. When everybody in capitalist society seems to, without, without going to the the um, the extremes of Vegas, that we do believe that human beings are a means to earn in themselves. But say in relationships now, like if you were to appoint someone your attorney, would they be a means to an end? You know, would your attorney be a means to an end? Would that person? Um, this is where it becomes more interesting. Though. Around people around town, fair enough, are on holiday, but where it becomes so your attorney or your son or your wife, you know, would you believe they're an end in themselves and that you love them for who they are, rather than just a business transaction? So, morality of relationships is very important. We can't. And morality of government is.